What's the weirdest thing that you've seen at someone's house that they thought was completely normal? Once when I was a kid I was invited to stay over for dinner at a friend's house. My friend's mother poured a large quantity of ketchup into a cereal bowl, which the entire family all casually dipped their fingers into and licked throughout the meal. That sounds like something out of the twilight zone. Maybe they didn't want you to ever come back over. A white carpeted kitchen. Now that is just severely ducked up. A K.A. Gordon Ramsay cooking challenge. I was invited over to a friend's house for dinner for the first time. Now, for staging purposes, they all sit around the living room to eat as a family. They have these two large dogs. So, I ask beforehand, as I always do, what the rules are with the dogs and food. Am I supposed to ignore begging? Can I give them a bite? What kind of stuff can I feed them? Do they have to do a trick to get some? They tell me that not only can I feed them whatever I want, but that all the plates are given to the dogs after the meal, and that the dogs would hassle you if you took the plate straight to the kitchen. So, I finish my meal, which was decent, and I lay my plate down for the dogs. They clean it up quite nicely. I pick it up to take to the kitchen, and I ask if it goes in the sink or the dishwasher. They said to put it back in the cabinet because the dogs clean it good enough to eat off of. I laughed at the joke and then kinda reiterated my question. It wasn't a joke. My friend walked into the kitchen and put her plate, her boyfriend's plate, and her mom and dad's plate all in the cabinet with the other clean dishes. I could have been sick. I dropped all contact with them. That was just too much. TLDR. Their dishwashing was done exclusively by the dogs. Yelling from the bathroom. Where do you guys keep the toilet paper? Just let the dogs take care of it. This was when I was a kid, I was at my friend's house and her mom got us some orange juice with our lunch. When we finished eating she took the remaining juice from the cups and poured it back into the container. Even as a kid I thought it was disgusting. The last glass of juice in that container would probably be mostly backwash. Just awful. Why is there pulp in this no pulp OJ? They keep a sewing needle slash pin stuck into their hand towel. I found it by reaching to use the hand towel to dry my hands and putting the pin through my finger. I was like WTF guys and they just shrugged as in, you don't have sharp objects hiding in towels? They then went on to explain that it was used for draining pimples. This is how you get hepatitis. I would have been less upset if it was just a trap. Kids in the home going to the fridge, grabbing a stick of butter, unwrapping it, taking a big bite, wrapping and putting it back. My daughter eats butter. I can't keep it on the table because she'll find a way to get her hands all up in its business. It's ducking weird. Shutting with their bathroom door completely open. That's how my ESOS parents do it. They leave the door wide open and you can see, hear and smell them take a shut from the living room. It was completely weird the first time I slept there with my SO, and then I was going out of the room, and see her father sitting on the toilet reading a magazine. I completely froze, and just stared at him. He farted, looked at me with a poker face and waved. I ran downstairs. Dominance, asserted. When my brother and I were kids, we would often comment, that our next door neighbor's house smelled like pee. One day my brother was playing video games with the kid from next door at his house and asked to use the restroom. The kid said, we just pee here and started peeing in the closet. My brother peed in there too. When in Rome, we pee in the closet and use the bathroom as a breakfast nook. I don't think they understand what a water closet is. I met this kid in third grade and he seemed normal. Cool kid. Funny. Anyway, I go to his house to work on a school project, and his mother was a hoarder. Worst of the worst. She could have marathon of the hoarders in her own home. I guess the kid thought it was normal because he had been loving in it since he was born. He was kinda disheartened when he came to my house and didn't have to climb over mounds of trash to take a piss. A good high school friend's mom was a hoarder. We had to navigate narrow corridors through all the piled junk to get to his room. His tidy, spartan, immaculately clean room. Did he get yelled at for his clean room? I went to a friend's house and they had their halls lined with grandfather clocks. This was a little weird but nothing major. The weird part came when his dad told me and my friend don't you kids go around telling anybody about my clocks. Now I'll never forget about his precious clocks. Now we all know about his clocks, you realize. 
you're really in the shut now. Paramedic here. 102 liter soda bottles filled with urine, because the toilet is broken. But where was he pooping? Where was he pooping? I had a friend who did this. He'd shut in a pizza box then take the box outside and put it in the bin for his building. It was a couple of months before he realized the pizza boxes had his name and flat number written on them. Did a couple of tours in Iraq and went in hundreds of houses. Common thing was, if they had a DVD player or some other kind of electronic device, they would always keep the styrofoam packing on the device. I don't know if they thought it was part of the DVD player or if it prevents dust from entering. Also saw a great number of what I call barn people. Pretty much kids that are too dysfunctional and mentally challenged to live with the rest of the family. So they keep them in the barn or shed. Pretty sad. My ex-wife's 90 year old grandmother had three special vases that were her prized possessions. She would show them to everyone when they came over. They were barns. Stems and bowls still on the side. No one ever had the heart to tell her. Flowers are flowers, I suppose. She knew. Old hippie troll. I guess you could call them potted plants. Went to a party in college and the kid living there had boxes of cat fancy magazine catalogued by month and year all over his room. When I asked about it, the dude just shrugged and said, I'm into cats. I was too nervous to ask more. Had a friend in high school. Went to his house for the first time and everything smelled like piss. Turns out he had a dog and his family never bothered to potty train or clean up after it. Everything in the house was covered in old dried up urine and fresh puddles. While I was there the dog peed on my friend's bed and he didn't even care. He literally sleeps in his dog's piss. Even I got pissed on. Never went to his house again. Not me, but when my dad was younger he went to a friend's house who had a hallway with nude family pictures. I know a chick who has two pictures proudly displayed in her house. One of her slightly too old to be nursing kid, sucking away at a tit. One of her, topless on a bike. Both pics are sort of arty and cool. But her boy is 10 years old now. I have to wonder how he feels about growing up with those pics in his living room. My friend refuses to vacuum and her carpet is covered in a layer of loose hair. I know a guy whose entire home has a layer of dog and cat hair on everything. He told me, if I vacuum the hair, there's gonna be hair on everything in like 30 minutes, so I just don't vacuum it. Hey had a room that was off limits to touch. It was made up like a iving room but you weren't allowed And there. It's for when the queen visits. I had a friend in high school whose family used a G.I. Joe aircraft carrier as a coffee table. I had to google that, and it is indeed awesome. My friend, Todd, and I were both 10 years old. I spent a lot of time at his house, but always had the feeling that things were just off in some way. I didn't know what his mom did for a living, but I did know she slept until 2pm daily. Todd told me that the overwhelming urine smell in the basement was from his cat, but I couldn't understand how one cat was capable of that stench. His mom and stepdad eventually were caught and did prison time for manufacturing crystal meth. Does your friend Todd have an Uncle Jack? Dog shut. Old, crusty, along with fresh and smelly pit bull shut all over the living room while he'd just sit and watch TV in the room as if it wasn't even there. Yeah, this was my house. Yeah, this was my room at. I'd pick it up, let the dog out try to house break it. He did nothing. As I packed up my stuff to move out, I stopped picking up the do. Thinking he'd man up. Nope. I had to step around those massive landmines as I moved out. A 5 year old in diapers. I was an adult literacy volunteer and I went to this couple's trailer. A kid walks in shirtless, wearing a diaper. At first, I thought it was a joke. Then I thought maybe developmental issues. Then the mother says about time to change a diaper ain't it? And the boy said defiantly, you ain't gonna change my diaper. We had a human skull in a glass case in our living room growing up. It was years before I figured out that was really weird. My mom got it from a doctor friend or something. Just some random head. Not like a relative or anything. We called him Freddy and had to super glue his jaw back on every few years when it fell off. I guess I had repressed the memories, but just typing this now I recall touching it and playfully tossing it around gently at times. I'm torn between wanting to respect the dead and really wanting a skull. 
a jug of piss by their bed because they were too lazy to walk to the bathroom. It's the way of the road bubs. Spent the night at a friend's house in 6th grade. He lived with just his mom. Dad wasn't in the picture and he was an only child so they had a close relationship. We were having a great time until his mom called him for bath time with her like together. They even left the door open like it was nothing. They could have been polite and offered you a scrub down as well. Sleepover when I was 12 or 13. Woke up and went to use the john. Bathroom door is wide open. My buddy and his older brother are bushing their teeth. Their dad is taking a dump and their naked mom was jumping out of the shower. It was a small house with a one bathroom type situation, which I get. The problem for me was the fact that all of the family members were gigantic. Like their mom was the smallest at 6 feet 3, 250 ish. As a short man not used to that sort of thing. Total shock. When I moved cities in grade 2 or 3 I didn't know anyone. I met someone the first day and he invited me to his house that weekend to stay over. Everything was great. We played GameCube and stayed up until 3am. The latest I had been awake up to that point. He said we had to sleep in the basement so that we don't wake his parents when we went upstairs. We go downstairs with our sleeping bags and immediately I knew something was wrong. The worst smell I've ever experienced filled my nostrils the further we descended. In the corner of the room was a bed covered in what looked like crusty blood and some pus colored streaks. Turns out his mother had a home birth the week before and kept the sheets as a memento. I haven't been back since. You'd think that the baby would be a good enough memento. When I was dating my first girlfriend in high school, I was invited over to her house for dinner and meet the parents, etc. At one point I was talking with her father in his study and noticed lots of old looking phallic objects on the shelves in the room. On closer inspection, they were mummified venuses, dozens of them. Turns out he was a urologist and an amateur archaeologist. He really digs Venus. Kind of weird, more sad than anything. A family I babysat for as a teenager had a little dog, maybe a Yorkie, but they kept it in a cage all the time. And whenever they let it out, the dog would go crazy and would be wagging its adorable little tail and running around in circles so fast. To me, this was understandable because it had so much pent up energy. But that enraged this family and they would almost immediately put it back in the cage because the dog was misbehaving. It was devastating. Whenever I went over there, I gave that dog so much attention. And I ended up dog sitting it for a week. I went over there as much as I could to play with him and walk him. I asked the family before they left if it was cool if I took the dog on walks. And they said something along the lines of yeah, that's cool. But we never have done that before. So he'll probably go crazy. I was too young to realize that I should have said something to someone about how this dog was being neglected. But I didn't. Instead, I gave him all the love I could within those few times I was there and cried almost every time I left because the dog just looked so dejected. If I ever get an animal, I'm going to give it so much love because seeing that dog broke my heart. I stole a kitten once in high school because I went to a party, friend of a friend of a friend, and this total doucher was joking around about this stupid animal and swinging it around by its neck skin, and then he threw it across the room and laughed and kicked it pretty hard there was no food or litter box or water, he was a college student and the house was a hellhole. It was so gross, and he was being so horrible, and I was so ducking mad I just grabbed the kitten, walked straight out, and took her home with me. She lived a happy and long life and I loved her dearly. She hated everyone but me, and I can see why. Who the duck could throw around a little baby kitten, and call it names. Why?